Good morning. Today we are going to listen to a story called Action Jackson. It's by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan, and it's illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. This is a biography, so it is a nonfiction book. It is not fake. We're going to learn all about Jackson. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock puts on his paint splattered boots and walks across the yard. The wind blows in from Gardines Bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing, sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, beetles crawling in the grass underfoot. Coco, the crow he tamed, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Gip, runs in circles, demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide, sandy beach. But Jackson turns and keeps going. The gray-weathered barn used to be filled with rusty machinery, old fishing gear, and broken tools. Now, it's his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall. Not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his paintings to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through cracks and boards and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits, silent, on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. Some artists cover the canvas with a base coat of white paint. Not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface, leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolor. Not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make his painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes. Not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits, surrounded by the cans of animal, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases, waiting. At last, he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it into a can of syrup paint, syrupy paint. Slowly, he circles the canvas, stepping around the edges, straddling the corners. Black lines form a tangled web. Now, he chooses a brush, working toward the middle. Sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white. An athlete with a paintbrush he uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending, and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make a longer and longer line. I want to keep it going. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly, he feels exhausted, used up, his inspiration gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper, his mind filled with thoughts about the wet painting back on the studio floor. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas, studying his work, but he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks the beach past the sandy marshes and the tall Spartina grass that waves in the breeze. 
he spends hours sitting on a grassy dune watching the gulls. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the patterns of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come. And the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw, as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas, coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I'm much more at ease. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue black meet. Wow, sounds really cool. Jackson listens to jazz recordings in the evenings. He likes musicians who improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory, swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a, pen, if a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect lands in wet paint and there it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface which, with sticky, paint-stained hands. One, then two, handprints across the canvas. His eyes move up and down, back and forth. With light steps, he follows the sweep of his brush. He stops and a pool of paint pauses. Paint, paint and more paint, dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches, but his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished wonder what it will look like. Wow. Some people will be shocked when they see what he has created. Some angry, some confused, some excited, some filled with happiness they call, they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree. Jackson Pollock is doing something original painting in a way that no one has ever seen before. Number one, 1950, Lavender Mist. It says National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC. So if you were to go to Washington, DC, you can probably see this in the art gallery, this painting of his. For the next few days, he and his wife, Lee, plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford. He digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. It will take another week for the thick paint to dry. Then, Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. Jackson sits, silent staring at the blank can canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon, he will dip his brush in a can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. The end. Wow. Look at all this cool artwork. Here he is in real life making that painting we just read about. Isn't that cool? That's huge. We 
the end.